Hey everyone, Gerard Scarpacey, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community here, bringing you another episode in our special series with our good friends from Pivot Point. We call it uh, Professionals Who Practice. And the idea here is to show you that, you know, even an accomplished professional really needs to keep practicing and to use great tools, great educational hair, like the Pivot Point mannequins. Today I'm going to be sharing with you what is definitely very timely, we're seeing it everywhere, the beautiful long shag, short shags, pixie shags, bob shags, all kinds of shags. Um, I'm working on what I like to call long shag, and hey guys, there's a lot of ways to do it, a lot of ways to layer hair, but basically a shag means you've got a lot of layers, a lot of looseness, a lot of softness. So how am I doing mine? Okay, I've pre-sectioned the top in a horseshoe on the round of the head, that I've broken into a few different components, and we'll talk about that as we get into them. And now I'm starting right in the center back to get some, some really heavy layering in the hair here. Um, I am taking slightly diagonal forward sections just to make it more comfortable with the angle, over directing back and out, not all the way back to the center, and not totally square either, kind of what some people might call triangular, back and out to the previous. And then I'm using my blade, you guys know I love razor cutting, um, and I'm working with my blade on what I call the bias, which means it's diagonal to the finger that's holding the hair. That's what I call my rotation. And then my stroke is fairly open, a fairly kind of larger deep stroke. This will give me a very, very soft line, which will make sure that my layers kind of disappear and don't get steppy on top of each other. Working my way through, the shortest layer when I started here in the center, I wanted it to be about nape length, yeah? And when I layer around the front, my shortest layer will then be about kind of lip length. Obviously, that's a choice you want to make, but I wanted to keep some density and length into the hair. We're working here with the beautiful Vanessa mannequin, which to be quite honest with you, is like a luxury mannequin. I mean, it's got a beautiful, beautiful head of hair, um, typically used a lot for styling and setting and updos but great for long hair cutting too. This is a true luxury mannequin, the Vanessa. Beautiful hair to work with, beautiful texture. And um, I had cut her previously. This is my second long haircut on her. I'd done a traditional long razor layer. And those of you maybe who followed along with me before know that with that I put in like a face frame here at the front, over direct and elevate off the face frame. So that leaves a lot of long layers on the inside. And, you know, when I teach that technique, I always say to people, the next thing, once you master that, is to start to kind of understand how to layer the hair more, which is what we're doing here. Internally working from short to long, maintaining the outline length. Now, if you guys have any questions, Kelly's behind the camera. I say hi, Kelly. Hi, everyone. She'll be happy to share them. Got any good questions or shout outs, Cal? Uh, yeah, of course. You've got a, a great audience tuning in. A couple people from Canada, Roxanne and Donna. Claudios is here with us, as well as Mai from Vietnam. Uh, Claudio is mentioning he doesn't do many razor haircuts. Uh, hopefully we can inspire you today to pick up a mannequin. Well, you know what, Claudio, that's pretty common. I think razor cutting, to a certain degree, is a lost art. Um, I think to a certain degree, a lot of that maybe came from fear. Um, because it, it is a lost art and the teaching of the craft of it was lost. Um, I liken great razor cutting to working with bleach. You know, bleach is a very, very powerful tool or whatever you want to call it, enlightener, lightener. It's a very, very powerful tool um, and if used properly can be incredible and if used improperly can be dangerous. And the razor is the same thing. So you need lots of training, lots of knowledge to be able to work with it and I teach that um, pretty much every week. Okay, now if you know my razor long layer, I usually start off in natural fall and work to the outline to keep weight. And I say don't over direct and don't elevate. Since we're going more for a shag, I am going to over direct and I am gonna elevate. And I'm gonna look and see where that lip length is because that's kind of where I want my shortest layer. Gonna lift up a little bit. Start there, again, bias blade. The razor's on the diagonal and the stroke is fairly open. And the stroke, you'll notice, is just coming from the fingertips. So even though I've got a powerful tool, I'm using it very, very gently. I'm not, at this point, using my whole arm or my whole wrist. And again, carving those layers in. Diagonal back sections now. So I'm, I layered from front to back. Now I'm layering, I'm sorry, layered from back to front. 
Now I'm layering from front to back. A shag has a lot of layers in it. Uh, Kylene was wondering, she loves doing razor cuts, and was wondering uh, about looking, she's looking to advance her, her techniques. Any suggestions well, here? I think, you know, uh, uh, for hblive.me, which is our dedicated kind of online academy, I have two classes, one called Razor Craft, which is, uh, you know, about a three-hour, four-hour class, and one called Innovative Cutting. So those are all online classes. Then, of course, you can always use these resources that are free to you on Facebook. Uh, but if you want to go deeper, there's that. And then, of course, there's hands-on. Um, you know, and there's a lot of great razor happening out there. I think we're at the finally really seeing a great renaissance of razor cutting. You know, just off the top of my head, of course, I can, I'll always credit Nick Orojo, Howard McLaren, Rodney Cutler. But, you know, there's kind of another breed coming up, too, of uh, people that were influenced by them. I think of Jane Matthews or Jane Ito, um, Goodbye Horse Girl. And, you know, there's just a lot of this great stuff happening on Instagram. So I think there's a lot you can learn. I want to say hello to Anna Pacito and Dara. Welcome, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hi, Anna. Always a pleasure. It's been too long since we hung out. Got to see you soon. All right, so you can see now um, I kind of ran out quickly from the front. So I layered from back to front, then from front to back. Now I'm going through where the two areas kind of connect here. And I'm using what I call slicing or channeling to remove kind of ribbons or, or bars of weight here. I go in like a key and a lock and I gently separate. Now, you know, I love the lushness of her hair, so I could do that more or less as I lift it. I'm gonna put a little bit around the face because it looked a bit kind of thick to me there. So I've already cut the layering in, and this is like a hidden or an invisible layering. And it's kind of like a sniper, you know, because the razor is so accurate and so thin um, that you really, you know, you can, even on damp hair, you can be very, very gentle. And sometimes people are afraid to remove weight on damp hair, but watch how gentle I can be. I can be really heavy handed too, but if I learn to kind of do it just with my fingertips, I can be super gentle about the process. Yeah, Lucinda has uh, been told that razor haircut is bad on, on naturally curly or wavy hair. She was wondering about your, your take on that. Um, you know, I think that you have to, to learn how to control the blade and its rotations. Um, just like, it's just like saying bleach is bad on naturally curly hair. It can be. It can be over-processed, overdone. It can blow out the texture. It's all about the hairdresser, how they apply it, how they maintain it. The thing with the razor is when you really kind of learn about what I call rotation and engagement and pressure, just like anything, you're in control. So I personally feel that I can razor any type of hair that has to do with me, not the razor. Just again, just like bleach or lightener or lifter or whatever your term is. All right, here you can see me starting on the second side. I pick up the guideline from the first side here and I unzip the hair from the head. This is kind of a kinetic form of cutting. It means that I travel as I cut. I travel from the starting point out to the ending point, or, or in simple terms, I just let the hair slide through my fingers as I cut. Mike was mentioning he always tries to keep his razor sharp and can only use a razor with a guard, but he has a difficult time actually slicing through the hair. Yeah, I mean, this, you know, listen, guys, if you use guards, that's great. If it's happy, if for law or for your protection, but just realize it's like a training wheel and it's going to not allow you to do all the, all the tricks you want to do. So it can be really hard to get pure accuracy when the guard is on. Um, you just have to kind of, you know, try a bunch of times. That's why early in my razor career, when I picked up the razor over 20 years ago, I quickly got away from the guard. Uh, but again, pretty much everything can be done with or without the guard. It's just harder with the guard. Julie was wondering, uh, does this thin out the bottom a lot? And could this shag be done on thinner hair? Yes. So again, it all depends on where, how, how, where you go, how the thing with the razor is. So my layering really is happening from below the crown to about the middle of the occipital bone. And all this hair is being unlayered. Yeah, just if you watch. Now, if you vary your tempo, vary your length, I mean, the layering could be just from here to here as well, yeah? So I could come out more quickly and keep more weight dropping out. So just like any good technique, there's plenty of ways to customize based on the hair type, texture, and density. 
just over directing slightly back to the previous, what we usually call a triangular kind of over direction. And right about here is where I blend out to the existing length. So nothing from below the occipital bone is getting layered. So we're keeping plenty of density. Now remember, this is a shag. It's meant to be really layered. If you don't want it really layered, you can do more of a classic long layer, which is a different technique that I teach in lots of other videos. That's where the use of a consultation and pictures really come in. And man, there are some great pictures of shags out there right now, aren't they? Go on Instagram, check out, you know, my favorites. Some of my favorites are uh, Jude Viola, Jane Matthews, Goodbye Horse Girl. There's tons of others that I'm unfortunately not remembering in, this, in the moment here. But so much beauty and inspiration. And it's just really sexy, sexy, beautiful hair, which I love. Crystal is wondering about the comb. Can you tell yeah, us a little bit about it? This is a comb bank tough 20. It's, uh, when, I, when I razor, I like a very wide side and a very fine side. And I like a rigid comb. This is a carbon comb because I don't like a lot of give. When I take the section, if the comb for me, and that's a personal choice, but for me, if the comb is bendy, I feel like I have a little less control over what I'm doing. These are available on Hairbrain Pro. Same thing with the razor. This is my uh, Hairbrain Pro razor that I designed. Beautiful wooden handle. And if you guys are really into it, and if you want to use a guard, this comes with a guard that slides over it. So problem solved. Guard or no guard, that's up to you. Uh, yes, and, and as the comments roll on, uh, people are mentioning that they, they do have to have a guard. It's Great. state state regulated. Fantastic. We definitely have guards. You can work with guards. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, Janine was wondering, if they wanted the length off, would you do that first? Definitely. Because you have to proportion it to the layers. So if you do a lot of layering and then you take the length off, you might lose some of your layering. So you want to choose the amount of layers in proportion to the length. If it's, a, I mean, if we're talking about a half an inch, that doesn't matter. I would say anything more than two inches, go ahead and cut the length off first. Working into the sides, over directing back and out, using the guideline here. Blade on a bias, that means it's on a diagonal. And the stroke is open, it means it's about two inches into the hair, coming completely from my fingertips. I like to keep the hair damp when I work with the razor, just so that it glides. Notice I didn't say dripping wet, but damp. This is a great sprayer, also available on Hairbrain Pro, a nice micro mister, so that the hair just doesn't get doused. Uh, Jose was reminding us about Joel Torres. Yes, of course. Joel Torres, absolutely. Again, uh, one of my favorite hair cutters. He was featured with us um, in January at our teaching in Long Beach. Love him to death. Talented, great teacher and beautiful hair cutter, and he does some pretty beautiful shags. And yeah, let's be honest, anyone that comes from the Tony and Guy or TG world knows how to make hair sexy and soft, so props to everybody there. So again, today we are working with our good friends Pivot Point, and this is the Vanessa mannequin from Pivot Point. I'm also using the universal tripod. Um, and the whole idea here is to show, and this is very, very true, I love to practice. You know, I'm doing classes every weekend, and you know, I, I'm not the type of person who wants to teach and do things exactly the same way every weekend. So during the week, I always get out mannequins, I play around, I think about what's new or different that I want to teach, you know, what the trend is. So right now I'm practicing, because I've got a class this Monday in Boston. So I'm always practicing, and I think really to be the very best, practicing is, is the key. And great high quality mannequins make it easy because you can do it whenever the, whenever you're inspired to do it, whenever you want to give it a try. Uh, obviously working on live models and is fantastic, but they're not always around at midnight when you get a moment of inspiration. All right, Kel, so I'm coming to the second, the front here now. I'm going to move myself around this way. Then we'll address the top. So you guys can see I've pre-sectioned the top. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's get this bottom layered in first. Hi, Milo Maksimovic is here with us. Always a pleasure to have my mindful haircutting friend. So again, when I typically teach a long layer with a razor, which this mannequin was cut into before, I don't elevate. I keep it low and I work like that. Then I start to elevate behind the ear. If I want more weight out or more shag effect, I'm going to start to elevate and over direct forward. And I'm starting at about the lip, blade on a diagonal, or what I call bias blade. And again, working down 
towards the existing length because we decided we want to keep most of her life. Go check for balance. If you guys have any questions, you want to shout out, tell us anything you want. Send us some love. We love love. And some love for Pivot Point as well and their incredible products. Uh, Melissa was wondering if you can uh, go into a little bit more detail about your class in Boston. Uh, she lives in Boston. You know what? It's a private class, um, and it's going to be run through some of my friends at Aveda, at the Aveda um, Education Center there. So it was a class for Aveda salons. Uh, but I do classes all over. If anyone's ever interested, you just send me a DM, a direct message on my Instagram uh, which is my name, Gerard Scarpacy, um, and I'd love to visit your salons. Send me, uh, send me a DM, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, Lorena was mentioning that she has curly hair, and she loves a razor on her curls. Good. I have curly hair, and I love the razor on my hair, too. I haven't had a razor cut in a while just because um, it's just the way that it's worked out, and I, w I miss getting my hair cut with a razor because it really, when it's cut well, curly hair with the razor, the ends are tapered, not shattered. And for me, that taper really allows that hair to have freedom and movement. It means that the ends are thinner than the root. You can see this is tapering right now. It's not shredding. The blade's on the diagonal, and you can start to see some air and space in the ends of the hair. I'm running out of layering because I've already layered from the back. So now I start to kind of fuse the two areas together using slicing. That'll put some space in there, some air, as we like to say in between the back and the front where there might be a little bit of a corner. Oh, Jamie came with a great question. Uh, he's left-handed, or she, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes uh, using the razor as you are around the front feels awkward. Any suggestions? Um, again, it's, I can do this left-handed. It's just kind of everything's exactly the opposite. So when you're working here and you're holding the hair, you would work with the heel on this side. Let me just get it a little closer. So I'm working, I'm right-handed as I'm cutting. I'm working with the tip, or the more the front edge of the blade. When you're working, I would suggest you work more with the heel or the back edge of the blade. That's how a lefty would do it. Yeah? Can you so, show us on the other side, or maybe sure, when we get there? Sure. As a righty, on this side, I would work with the heel. It's like a mirror image. What I do on the right, you do on the left. I would work with the heel. You would work with the tip like that. That's just some basics about learning hand and body position. But here's the thing, if you're left-handed and you're learning from a right-hander, whatever they do on the right, you do on the left. Whatever they do on the left, you do on the right. So that's, you know, that's what's always worked for me and I've taught lots of left-handed people. So I just make them, we call it like a mirror image. Okay, so plenty of layering happening here. I think it's time now to take a look at the top. What do you think, Kel? Let's do it. All right. So as you can see here, I'm going to show you guys what we did on the top. I've got a horseshoe on the round of the head, and I've sectioned it modularly in four different little modules or zones. This one's going to make up the bang, and we're going to do a nice kind of curtainy bang. This is going to make up some of the layers that are going to start falling away from the face. And then, of course, this is going to make up the crown, the hair that's going to fall over the back. So I've really just kind of segmented it out. Let's start with the bang. And you know, one of the big things that's kind of working with these shags is to have a beautiful kind of curtain bang. I think that's the term that is kind of most popular and I, I love it, it makes sense. You know, it means that it's kind of shorter in the middle and it just kind of like a curtain drapes over the face. Lots of ways to do it. I'm gonna show you what I'm into at the moment. Let's get her right in a good position. I'm gonna make it pretty simple. I'm gonna take a half inch horizontal section across the forehead. Very, very simple. I'm gonna keep my sectioning clean. Now I know that my layers start about lip level around her face. I'm not looking for a perfect connection here. I don't mind if there's a little disconnection from what I do on the top to the bottom, but I want a good relationship. I'm gonna turn a little bit, Kel, so you get a better angle. I'm gonna come right here, and I'm gonna be standing right in front of her. So what I've been doing is just kind of carving out a little bit of the weight in the middle naturally so I think of it like almost like in three areas you know what's kind of falling in the center what's falling off to each side in the center here 
I'm going to use a little bit of what I call flat razoring, but with a pretty close stroke. So there's a little bit of a defined area in the center. I'm going to take out some weight first. So I'm going to do what I like to call pre-lightening using slicing. Pre-lightening, yeah? Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to use the flat of the blade and get a pretty close, pretty small stroke, get a line in here, but a very kind of broken or soft line. And when you say the flat of the blade, you, you mean the whole broad side of the blade, not, yeah, not more, the tip, it doesn't, not you know, the You don't have to be quite so literal. It's just more, using the blade more flat. Now here I'm using it more on a diagonal. So here it was more flat. My fingers are flat. My blade is flat. Here it's a little bit more diagonal. And it's subtle. Sometimes it's hard for people to see the differences, but you can see the effect on the hair. So here I'm using the blade more diagonally, or what we call bias. And again, going back to my earlier analogy, it's like using different volumes. You know, you've got five volume, 10 volume, 20 volume. You know, it can be subtle, but it can also make a big difference. Um, Eric was wondering if, if, you need, if a razor cut needs product to protect it from, from getting split ends. Um, it needs to be damp. So you can use a little product to help with that dampness. You can use just water. Um, you know, I think it's about how you feel with the hair and how your blade works. So I don't think you have to have product other than the hair being damp, but I'm not opposed to that idea either. A little cutting lotion that makes the hair easier to manage is never a bad thing. A little bit flat and square in the middle. And if she's noticing split ends, would that be the sharpness of the blade? Well, I mean, that's the first problem. You want to work with a really sharp blade. Um, so if the blade is dull, it's going to be pulling. But then the other thing is really understanding subtle rotation. It's, you know, again, the analogy that I use is you, if you always use 40 volume and lightener on everything that you do, don't be surprised if sometimes you damage hair. So a lot of times with the razor, this, the way people work with it is too flat and too open and too much pressure. So you really need, you know, either through video or through uh, getting some coaching to really see the subtle differences because they can be really subtle. You know, what I'm doing here in the middle with the, with the weight removal, and the it's all about the rotations of the blade, and they're so subtle. A couple of degrees one way or the other, and you've got a whole different effect. Coming back in, going from that shorter center, working diagonally out. And hey, you know what? If you don't like razors, good for you. You know, do what you love. My first 10 years of my career, I worked for Vidal Sassoon, I thought razors were the worst thing in the world. I believe that you should never cut hair with a razor, so I tried to be the best scissor hair cutter I could be. And then one day I woke up and I said, you know what, I'm gonna try razors. But just do what you love and be great at it. So here you can start to see the effect, the layering from the, from the underneath technique. A little bit of weight removal here in the center, a little bit more free form. Jose was wondering, uh, have you ever used a technique where you fully open the scissor, hold it upside down, and use it as a razor? I haven't, no, but I've seen it done. And if it works for you, then that's awesome. I can imagine, it sounds kind of like razor cutting to me. So if that works for you, great. You know, I, I like the balance of having a folding handle. I like the comfortability and the dexterity that I get from doing what I'm doing here. But you know what? As long as it looks good and you don't damage hair and you're not hurting somebody, then you have fun. All right, so you can see the layers, the curtain bang happening here. I'm starting to let that hair dry off a little naturally. I can, you know, I, I put product in more after I cut the area than before. So I'll go through and put a little styling lotion in here just so it can kind of dry off as I work in other areas. So usually I keep the hair pretty clean while I'm cutting, and then once I feel like I've kind of cut that area, I might add some product. All right, now coming back in through the top. So again, I want a decent amount of layering here, so I'm going to bring this hair forward, and I'm going to relate it to the underneath shape. I'm going to take a horizontal or vertical section, depending on what part of the head you're looking at. I'm just going to comb it forward. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to relate to this bang, this side of the bang. I'm going to lift. I'm going to go in with some slicing, as I've been doing all along, some weight removal, just straight in. And usually I don't marry it completely to the guide. I give myself just a little space. So I can see the underneath guide and I've just given myself a little space 
so that when it falls over, it actually starts to create a little bit of a longer frame. Next section. I'm gonna tilt the head towards me. That's also what's great about these tripods. They're, they're so controllable in the height and the movement that what I wanna teach you to do on a client, I can teach you on a tripod. I move the head forwards. This allows me to elevate higher in a very natural, comfortable way without disturbing my body or the hair. Stephanie um, would like to know the difference between a feather razor and a straight razor. I think she might mean the difference between a styling razor maybe. Yeah, it's just how it feels and how it performs in your hands. The typical, what people call a feather razor can work well for this technique, but generally most, most of what people call a feather razor have a guard on it. Not a bad thing, just harder to feel and control the hair. I also, what I like about what I call a folding razor is I've got a counterbalance. You see how gentle I can be? So I can just move my fingers and I can rotate. All these little things that I'm talking about with rotation are easier because there's a handle. And, and with feather, just to clarify, feather being the brand and a styling or a plie razor being the type of... Which is also a feather. Again, a lot of people don't realize that feather is a company. It's not a tool. The most popular razor is called the feather styling razor. That's the one that po most people know and use, and it's a great razor. Feather also makes the plie, which is a folding razor, and then Hairbrain makes the HB Pro, which takes feather plie razor blades, which are these guys right here, feather plie. And these are the best I found. You know, that's one thing I'll say without a doubt. I don't find any room for, uh, you know, argument there. Feather plie blades are without a doubt the sharpest, best blades to work with. And I want to see how that's falling over into the shape here. Vicky was wondering about the tripod. Where could you purchase one? You can go to pivotpointshop.com. They've got a few different tripods. This is their Uber luxury top of the line tripod, but it's worth it. Can I tell you how many cheap tripods I've worked with and used in my life? I bought tripods once and by the end of the class, half the tripods were broken. They were cheaper tripods, not made by Pivot Point. Uh, I thought, well, this is great, Who, you know? Pivot point makes quality stuff, and that's the difference. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Coming into that area, see how I'm dropping that over? There's a reference underneath. I don't have to marry it exactly to that reference. I just want it to be consistent. I'm gonna drop her down a little bit. I'm gonna put Vanessa's head forward a little bit. Elevating off the head, pre-lightening. Pre-lightening. Coming back to pre-lighten this way on this side, that actually makes a big difference when that hair falls over. Now again, I don't feel like I have to marry it exactly to the underneath line. It's a reference. I want balance with the other side, and I want a reference, but sometimes the beauty of the shag is that there's a little smudginess here and there. It's not a perfect geometric haircut. It doesn't mean it should be a mess and unbalanced. I think I'm working in a very methodical, controlled way here. But sometimes that little space in between things makes a huge difference. Okay, so Kel's gonna get a good shot here of the slicing. So you can see I'm elevating. I go in about halfway between the root and the ends, like a key and a lock, create some space. Turn it around on this side, it makes a big difference because that hair's gonna fall over and it's gonna melt into the underneath. And then use a reference. You can reference it with this side here. Now, I want you to think of great razor cutting like doing a beautiful rough sketch. You gotta feel it. You know, if you're great at geometric precision hair cutting, that's a great place to start. I definitely recommend you get good at that before you even try this because it can easily turn into a big mess if you've got no structure to what you're doing. Just sending out all kinds of support, Gerard. You've got bunch of people who are, are loving it. Got some good friends out there? Good. Thanks, guys. We always appreciate Vicky, the support. Vicki, Stephanie, thank you for hanging out with us. So there you can see the weight removal, and now you can see removing some of the excess length on the ends, working on the line. If you're just joining us, I'm here. I'm Gerard Scarpacy here in New York City, working at Blonde Studio, which is our kind of home away from home when we're working on educational videos like this for Facebook. Today we're working a part of the Professionals Who Practice series, which is kind of a partnership with our good friends at Pivot Point, who make these incredible educational tools, 
for classes and for learning and for practice. And you can see what I got going on here. It's a long shag. That's the idea. Um, if you miss the underneath, I did some really great, what I call kinetic layering, uh, from the back to the front, and then from the front to the back. Then I started working into this top, which is quite a modular thing. And again, here's the good news. If you have missed it, you can come back at any time to our Facebook page, that's the Hairbrain Facebook page, and you can watch it, all right? So, almost done. This is the last panel here, right? Now, so that I don't have too much disconnection because I've got a shorter area here in the middle. I don't want this to be six inches longer. So I'm not gonna keep dragging it all the way forward. I'm gonna use a pivot point. So the hair that was cut here was cut forward there. I'm now gonna bring it over this way and I'm gonna use it as a guideline. So I'm gonna tighten it up in this position. Let me just move the head around a little, Cal, so you get a good angle. And let me get this combed out. You can see there's a lot of hair there. And I don't want it, you know, to feel weird or disconnected. You know, for me, this haircut, even though there are some subtle disconnections, it shouldn't look disconnected when it's done. So this hair was cut here. Now I pick it over here and check it. Refining it. Now I'm going to pivot off the crown. And I'm going to kind of round my body with it. I'm not going to overdirect too far forward. I'm going to do some slicing first, which will really help it blend and relate to the underneath. And for me, one of the key points is doing that slicing on this side right here. Then I'm going to cut off the excess length. And if you've you know, ever seen me do a classic long razor layer, you'll understand that this is an evolution of that technique. You know, and that to me is what great haircutting is all about. You take fundamental techniques, you master them, and then you put a little spin on them. What if I overdirect less? What if I elevate more? What if I add more texture? What if I use a little disconnection? You know, whatever it is, let's just say some systems teach like nine or ten basic haircuts. Once you master those, then you make them your own. You put your own spin on it. Uh, Lee Brown is on is on uh, his way to mastering the craft. She says that they've been uh, practicing the locking technique since razor craft class. Lock and load. On Monday. Yeah. Awesome, Lee. So, you know, if you do take a class with me, I take um, safety very seriously. And I think anyone that's ever taken a class with me, if they choose, I don't force anyone to work with a straight edge. You're, you can work with a guard. I even bring guards with me to put on for people who have a straight edge but have never really used it. Because I don't think cutting yourself is a great way to learn, but I also think if you learn to be safe, and it's called the lock and the load method. So I lock the razor with my pointer finger, and you see how it's always out of the way? It's always controlled. That eliminates a lot of the danger for the hairdresser when they're working. I don't think it's funny, I don't think it's, I, I don't encourage people to cut themselves. I really don't, I want you to be happy and healthy and peaceful. So longest hair on the head right now in the center back, so taking out a lot of weight on this guy. A lot of heaviness there, you can see that. Now using this hair that I've just previously cut, picking it up, finding my shortest point, bias blade, still really thick here in the bottom, so a little bit more slicing, pre-lightening or slicing. Fairly aggressive there, maybe some of the most aggressive weight removal I've done, but on this luxurious Vanessa mannequin, it gets pretty thick in the crown, which is a great thing if you're dressing and styling hair. Nobody wants a balding mannequin. But when you're cutting, you gotta manage it. So you can see there, again, even though there's a disconnection from the underneath, there's a great relationship. Randy Marshall, uh, what do you suggest for round or square shaped faces as opposed to a heart or oval shape? You know what? I think beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and I personally don't believe in face shapes in that are being that simple. I think we have to train our eye to look for the individual's beauty, understand their needs, and try to create something for everyone that's unique and individual. Um, I respect people that use that philosophy and say, you know, square means this and round means that, but I personally don't, so I can't, I can't give you a great answer there. I just really have tried to hone my eye by looking at what I think is beautiful in the world, in hair, in fashion, in art, in architecture, and then I look at people and I try to just go with my gut. That's my system. 
So removing some of that weight first, super important as we get into this thick area, then removing the length. And again, it's the subtlety of understanding the razor. You know, razors don't hurt people, people hurt people. It's how you use that tool, just like bleach. You know, if you've had a bad experience using bleach, it means you probably need to maybe made a mistake in your judgment on how you could use it on that hair. And that can happen the same with a razor. You have to understand its levels and volume, so to speak. Coming across now, again, you can see getting into the center, using the hair from the top as a guide, working through here, using slicing first. And yes, if you're just joining us, this is probably some of the most aggressive cutting I've done on this hair. I've done some very subtle things, but this is where the hair is heaviest and thickest, and it's where we're going to really free up this shape the most that we possibly can. So this is kind of where I'm, what I like to call pushing the blade, pushing it through the hair a bit more. Kind of meeting up with the first side now. It's a good sign when we see a fluidity of shape. little bit more slicing. Okay, one last thing to do with the slicing and refining technique, and then I think I'll have my long shag exactly where I want it. We'll put some product in. So I'm now going to do what I call backhand razoring. I'm going to bring this hair straight up over my hand. I'm going to turn my razor around, and I'm going to start to slice up towards the ceiling gently so we can remove a little bit more weight where it needs it. So again, just turning that razor. Now, a lot of people that work with this razor maybe even have a challenge with this. So it's just natural at my side. I just come around. Remember that movement. It's just an arch. Then I usually am doing this while I'm elevating the hair. And I'm coming through with the grain of the hair. And this will really kind of polish off the lightness in the shape. Pivoting off the crown. coming through. Changing the way your cutting angle here, it, does it make a difference depending on our, does it make a difference, let me see, um, between cutting it the first way when you are pre-lightening? Yeah, this is going to make it lighter because I'm elevating. So if the question is what is this doing differently, yes. I'm elevating higher. If you remember I was cutting here, right? And By now bringing it straight up, and coming up into the grain, I'm elevating higher, and higher equals lighter. So that, that would be the difference here. Now, it should be subtle. I'm being very gentle at this point, but I know this is meant to be a shag. If I wanted more weight, maybe I wouldn't do this, but I want less weight. So this is just really kind of taking the edge off, and it's a good way to kind of check through the center, and especially here in the crown, because I kept saying how thick this luxurious Vanessa mannequin is. And that's a great thing for styling and dressing. But, you know, for a shag, if the crown is too thick, I need to lighten it. And that's a great lesson here, how to lighten that, how to get a little bit of extra. So kind of cross-checking through horizontally here. This was the area that was just cut. And getting a little bit more invisible layering. Sending some love to Yvonne Duda. He's calling you the hair boss. What's up? You're the hair boss, Yvonne. The hair boss of Croatia. The man. Yeah, it's definitely putting out some amazing images lately. Yeah, you know, guys, I took a little kind of break from Instagram, but, uh, you know, I decided that I wanted to share a little bit more, to tell my own story a little bit more from my own personal Instagram. Of course, Hairbrain Instagram is always on and popping, thanks to Kelly and Courtney and Gordon and Randy and all the videos he does. You know, but my own personal, I probably took a two or three month break. And you know what? That's okay. Guys, don't feel like a slave to something like Instagram because that kind of sucks, you know? But recently I've gotten really inspired again. So I'm back at it. So you can see the idea here. Yeah? Definitely a shag. Lots of layers. If somebody doesn't want a lot of layers, this ain't the haircut for them. You know, you can do a classic long layer. There's lots of different things you can do. Uh, I'm now going to put a little bit of a texture spray on top of that styling lotion, and I'll finish up just doing a little hand drying. You, Jeff, just sending all the support and the love. You got tons of uh, thumbs up and hearts. Well, awesome. uh, Dara's here, of course, she's supporting. James Ward, is most of this texturizing at the mid strand? 
yeah, of course you're going to make that choice of where you want to remove weight or texturize. For me, for something like this that's meant to be really light and textured, I usually don't go any deeper than the mid-strand. That's your choice. Do you want to go all the way to the root or lower than that? You know, it could be super cool if you're really trying to hollow out the hair. Um, but here, you know, I still wanted a certain amount of lushness to the hair. So now, guys, I'm just going to start. I probably won't dry it all the way, but I want to start getting some direction here using my Dyson diffuser and my hands on my beautiful Vanessa mannequin. Three great, great, three great tools. This one, this one, and these ones. Downward deep, just pinching at the root, keeping the airflow downward, trying to get a little bend on those ends, and bringing out the shape. What are your thoughts in, in um, tipping the head over or, or blow drying upside down? Totally works. Totally works. You can get more volume and more direction. Could work great here to lean her forward a little bit. Absolutely. Use gravity. What you know, what I don't want to do is diffuse upward too much because that could make it crazy. So most of the time, I try to keep the airflow going downward as I work, working it down. You know, getting the hands in there. Uh, Kyleen was was interested in the Dyson. She said she's been thinking about it. I love it. I'm a big supporter. Number one, it does everything I need it to do. Number two, it's light, it's beautiful, it's a great conversation piece. I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan. I recommend it. And you know, this is the professional version. It's got a few little extra bells and whistles. The cord is longer. It's got a special nozzle. Um, and they've got a great warranty. I just had a student over the weekend who said she had a few problems and she called them up and they sent her a new one right away. So, you know, that's life. Sometimes mechanical things might have an issue, but the warranty is super important. I believe it's a two year warranty, which is a big deal with a blow dryer. Keep that air flow down. On the longer hair, I do like this loose pin curl in my hand. And then I kind of get that in there. Get a little bit more control on that. I'm going to turn around in the mirror a little bit, Kel, to see how we're drying off. Oh, yeah. She's looking shagtastic. So, again, very layered shag. Very important. If someone don't want a lot of layers, this isn't the technique for them. But, you know, we are at a moment in fashion where we're seeing this happening a lot so really up to you guys and your, and your clients but there's lots of ways to cut hair where it wouldn't be quite this layered even with the razor you can be very very delicate in what i call a razor long layer all right thanks to me she says it's awesome she loves it the cut the style everything great job you are an artist thank you you know i like to think of myself more as a craft hairdresser than an artist um, Anna Machito's in, into it. Hey, Anna. Miss you. I heard you were incredible in Las Vegas at Inter Park York. Always incredible. I'm sorry I missed you. Always incredible, her and her team. So you can see on the length here. And here's the other great thing about these mannequins. You can really style them. You know, some mannequins, I'll be honest with you, they may be cheaper than Pivot Point, but the hair is like what I like to call dog fur. This is great quality hair. You can get a lot more out of your lesson. You know, a lot more out of your practice. And that makes a big difference. Because if you cut it, but you can't style it to make it look good, how do you know if it's going to work? All right, I'm going to start to loosen this up a little bit now using kind of an oil-based spray. An oil-based aerosol. Just to take any of the crunchiness or grittiness off. And working that in. Thanks for hanging out with us, Stephanie, Deborah. Thanks for your support. Uh, Karen is wishing she could find someone to do this for her. You can. You just got to look around. Look around on Instagram. There's people that are great hair cutters in every city and every town. Instagram's become an incredible tool for finding those people. Again, Kel, I'm going to just give her a final look here in the mirror. I might pick up my scissor just for a second around the fringe or the bangs just to see if there's any 
additional work, all done very free form at this point. But I love how it's happening here. I want to thank you guys for your attention. It's always a pleasure when people want to learn, and uh, uh, it's my honor and privilege to share. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson of the long razor shag. Thank you to Pivot Point International for the continued support. Peace out, guys.